Welcome to this week's episode of Talk of the Town. My name's Philip Swicegood, and I am back with my good friend, Dr. Kenneth Harper from Vein Specialist of the South. Now, if you have questions about your veins, maybe you saw a new vein pop up and you just want to get some answers, give my friends at Vein Specialist of the South a call and they'll get you the answers that you deserve. We also wanna thank our presenting sponsor this week, which is Piedmont Healthcare. Piedmont provides comprehensive quality health care for all of your medical needs. Thanks so much to Piedmont for investing in Central Georgia and making a show like this possible. Now, if you're just waking up on Saturday morning, say it's about 6.30, you've flipped on the TV, and you're wondering, what in the world is talk of the town? Here's what you can expect week in and week out. A conversation between me, Dr. Harper, and someone in the community that you need to know about. This week is no exception because we are in the offices of L.E. Schwartz, which has been around for 114 years. That's right, 114 years in downtown Macon, Georgia. And we are here with three generations that are working here today. Melvin, Steve, Michael. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. Melvin. I want to start with you. This business has been around for 114 years. For those of our viewers that are not familiar with what you guys do, tell us what kind of business is Ellie Schwartz? Well, we're in the several specialty contracting uh, fields, primarily roofing, both industrial as well as residential. Uh, we also do all types of sheet metal, architectural sheet metal, including various, uh, you know, historic restorations and things of that nature, which we specialize in and do a lot of that. And we also are into siding and some other products that we just are looking at and uh, taking our time in deciding where we're going to go and how we're going to get there. That's fantastic. Steve, I'm curious, what in the world is it like to work with your dad and your son in the same business day in and day out? What a privilege. <laughs> what a privilege. It's, it's really a pleasure and, and we get along so great and we balance each other off very well. I always say dad is the visionary and I'm an implementer by, by nature and Michael takes the best of both of those and uh, it brings us both together and teaches us how to do the technology part which we struggle with a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been excited about the series of interviewing people in the community that have multi-generational businesses and thank y'all for allowing us to come and Learn about uh, Ellie Swartz. So tell us about the early days of Ellie Swartz. Well, uh, Ellie Swartz was my grandfather. He came to this country. Uh, his, his background, he was a Hungarian sheet metal worker. He came to this country and uh, uh, went first to Houston, Texas, where he uh, married my grandmother. And uh, I won't say it was an arranged marriage, but two of his sisters were married to two of his brothers but it was a beautiful two love affair brothers. yeah whatever <laughs> but anyway so it's a bunch of double it, it was first cousins involved it was something going on there <laughs> <laughs> but clearly it's it efficient, was one of the most you know? beautiful matches ever made yeah. and uh, and they came to macon uh my mother was an infant uh that was his first child uh, and so uh, when they came here in 1910 and from I'm to what I'm told, he came here with nothing but a, a motorcycle and a soldering pot, which is something that you, you can uh, weld sheet metal together in those days by melting lead and, and putting things together. And that was, that was what he had. And the business evolved from that very first beginning in 1910. Did any of the ancestors in Hungary, were they into roofing and metal work? Not that I'm aware so of. So he no. just, this was his calling. It was. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say I really never knew exactly how he, he came from Macon, from Houston to Macon, right. except he knew somebody who knew somebody and said, that's a good place to go. So no. they ended up here, but nobody loved it more than he did. What we've kind of learned is people come to Macon sometimes thinking it's for a short stay, and it has a way of growing on you, and you, you wind up turning around, and you've been here for a hundred years, you know, family-wise, or <laughs> longer, and or thirty or forty years yourself personally, and yeah, right yeah. now we're in six generations, that's, so we might stick it out. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's great, Steve. I want to ask you about the process of roofing and how you guys actually decide what kind of businesses that, that you're going to work with. Talk to me about what goes into putting a roof on. Well. 
first you have to decide whether you're going to bid a job or not. And everybody has different types of specialties. We're pretty much full service roofer and as well as deal with the exterior envelope of the building with the siding, as Dad said. Uh, we'll start with plans and specifications, look at those, see if that fits within uh, our work products. Uh, we'll bid products, either projects, either to general contractors, building owners, or directly to an owner, for example, on residential, and see if that matches up, if the price works. Uh, sometimes we'll be asked what type of roof system works best, and because there's no roof system that works for every project and we'll uh, provide some input but at the end of the day it becomes the owner or architect to say yes or no and then uh, we'll put a plan together about how to go about doing the building in the most efficient manner that uh, that works with the other trades that are involved and in, in ours and hopefully we can do it efficiently and good quality safely and make some money at the end of the day all three of y'all your last name is kruger Mm -hmm. So how did, how did the Krugers get in with the Schwartz? Well, as I said, my mother was a Schwartz. Yes. He was Ellie Schwartz's first child. Uh -huh. and, uh, and she, uh, of course, married my father, who was Dave yeah. Kruger. Uh -huh. So that's how we, we came to this point. And uh, cause the son was my uncle, her brother. And he was very dear to us. We lost him in in '97, but uh, we were, had a great partnership together when he I came in. He was in the business, so I was a third generation. Steve Ford, Michael five, and uh, he's got three young boys. So we'll see where that goes. And uh, but that's that was that's the evolution of the business. My mother, we, I didn't grow up here, but uh, my mother never got both feet out of Macon. So. <laughs> I always had a love for it and came back quite often. Yeah. Well, the beauty of, of it has been that Dad never, when it came time for me to start considering, we discussed it. it. The opportunity was here, but he never said, you are coming. I made that decision on my own. Right. Michael did as well, and right. there was some trepidation. We thought he was going to play professional baseball, but the curveball got him. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Melvin told me a little bit about uh, your choice of colleges, and so he told me some advice. What would you tell the kids about college? I told them they could go anywhere they wanted to as long as it was in the Southeastern Conference. All right, that's so. Uh, and I knew they had enough. <laughs> sense, and I knew they had enough sense to go to the University of Georgia. All right, there you go. And we were fortunate. We all went to the University of Georgia. We were all in the same fraternity. There's was a lot of tradition between the three of us. So you've witnessed the recent successes. Were you at Georgia during the previous national championship? I, was, I had graduated a couple years before, but I did see Herschel's first game in Knoxville, which was a great pleasure to watch. Sorry about that. Oh, brutal, <laughs> brutal. Who, who do you cheer for? As someone who was born in Tennessee, I'm a reluctant Tennessee fan. Uh, but I tell my wife, as committed as I am to this football team, that should you know, be encouraging to you. Yeah. you know? If I'm willing to put it out through the rough years, hey, that's right. Well, we, we grew up, uh, personally, a Braves fan, and we went to a lot of years. Oh, yeah. For, uh, or 95. <laughs> <laughs> so. Michael, I'm curious about the technology side of roofing. Uh, your granddad here was talking earlier about how technology has come in and has really reshaped this entire industry. Talk to me a little bit about that. Sure. Well, as far as estimating a roof, uh, back when I started, which... I guess was a while ago. <laughs> Doesn't seem like that long, but we used to print out blueprints and measure them with rulers and write everything down. Everything's computerized now. Uh, measurements are taken with aerial photography. Uh, you can do all your estimates on a computer. Really, you're not even doing a lot of it. The technology's doing it for you, and you're just making sure the parameters are there. So uh, we, we're able to do a lot more estimates with a lot less people in a shorter amount of time that we used to not be able to do. And so do you guys just have like a fleet of drones that you can, you know, send up and knock this stuff out quickly? How not, exactly not, that not us. We hire, we have companies that, that do that, that they sell to all other types of companies and we, we utilize their services. So it's not Google Maps, it's no. uh, actually Jones. <laughs> no, but that, that's just part of it. Also, the types of roofs that we're installing are, are different than they were when I first started. Uh, when I 
first started 20 years ago, we were putting on a lot of hot asphalt and gravel roofs. You don't see those much anymore. The uh, technology for single ply roof systems has basically taken over the industry. Uh, it's a much cleaner roof. They last typically as long as the old gravel roofs. And it's just I wouldn't a, argue that point with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the manufacturers offer the same warranty. You, you may be right. There's some roofs that we did 50 years ago that had gravel on it that are, are still viable. Michael, yeah. you were showing us this fascinating roof, something like I've never seen before, before we actually came on air. On air. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the, there's a new product out there. Uh, GAF, who is our main shingle manufacturer that we use, uh, has come up with a solar shingle product. And we're actually installing the very first one we've ever done this week. So I was showing you the video uh, of our guys out there installing a solar shingle. It's and so this a, is not a solar panel. No. It's a solar shingle. So the, literally the shingle is the solar. The apparatus. photovoltaics are in the shingle itself. The waterproofing membrane is the solar panel, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, so our guys are up there installing it this week. And then the electrical people are connecting it. And it, it's a different product from the typical solar panels you've, you've been seeing out there. So we're excited about the potential. Wonderful. Well, we've got to take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsor, but we will be right back. I work in inventory management, requiring a lot of walking and standing on concrete. After many years, my legs were bulging and swollen and embarrassing, and I hated to wear shorts or even a bathing suit. Plus, I'm a mom. I'm very active and love shopping and outdoor activities. My legs got worse over the years, and I was having trouble sleeping because my legs ached and they were restless. Hearing great things about vein specialists of the South, I called and made an appointment. Plus, it was covered on my insurance. An ultrasound showed my legs were even worse than I thought. The staff were very caring and professional, and I loved the way the doctor talked to me during my procedure, explaining everything. This made me feel completely comfortable the entire time. And the best part, there was little downtime and I could feel a difference in my legs immediately. If you're having vein issues and ready to improve the quality of your life, I highly recommend calling Vein Specialists of the South today. Piedmont Macon is proud to be your partner in healthcare, in business and in the community. From our two convenient hospitals and ERs, our cardiac program, women's services, and urgent care centers, we provide Middle Georgians with comprehensive care close to home. Our goal is to empower you through great care that's simplified, unified, and easier than ever to access. Our mission is to make a positive difference in every life we touch. We want to be part of your family and your life and to make our community a better place to live. Hey guys, we're back with the Medical Minute where we ask Dr. Harper your questions about vein care. Dr. Harper, this week's question is, what is the difference between varicose veins and spider veins? Well, they're both uh, clinical signs that you may have underlying vein disease. Varicose veins are bulging veins or very noticeable veins that are three millimeters or greater in size. And the spider vein are the unsightly veins that most people don't like, particularly the ladies don't like on their legs that are a millimeter or less in size. They can both be associated with underlying vein disease. So if you have those, that's, that's a clue that maybe you should come in and have your veins checked. The treatment for varicose veins, particularly those that are symptomatic, but typically something might be covered under insurance, whereas most spider vein coverage is more on the cosmetic spectrum. So if that sounds like you, you can visit veinspecialist.com and reach out to our medical team today. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We are here at L.E. Schwartz Roofing having a fascinating conversation that we think you're going to love. Marvin, I want to ask you about the milestones of the business that you guys have hit. To, to have been around for 114 years, it's incredible to think about all of the stuff that you guys have done. Talk to me about some of those milestones. Well, of course, uh, the, the two major milestones in my life has been the, when Steve came into the business, that was a great milestone. And then when Michael came, that was a, another great one. But prior to that, we, we the evolution of equipment in the business, it changed from uh, you know a relatively hands-on kind of effort to a lot of pretty sophisticated equipment. And uh, uh, we did a number of jobs that were like pioneer type of efforts. Uh, one of the main things, that, uh, one of the funny things that happened is that in the 70s, we uh, 
put a telephone on a roof, and that became big news. One of the trade magazines picked that up and said, it's never been done before. So, so you can imagine what technology has happened since that period of time. But prior to that, we had a terrible fire in the 60s that destroyed uh, uh, our offices almost totally in one bay of the shop. And one of the things I'm, I'll never forget and maybe most proud of is that we were in business the next day uh, because people that we did business with, we, we woke up after the fire and, and trucks were there to help us take what wow. equipment we had. We found a place to move and we were virtually in business the next day. And even our competitors were helpful in that. It says a lot about making. Yeah. It says a lot about how people care for each other. And that was a, that was a major, major happening, clearly something I'll never forget. So how long have you been at this location right now? We've been here since 1953. Right. And we moved here, it was kind of crazy. It was a dirt street. And uh, the offices, uh, we moved off of Plum Street, uh, really? which we had a small shop. It was uh, 3,000 feet, and this was uh, uh, 10,000 feet, and an office were 20 by 50. And now, of course, we've grown significantly in all those years, and now we, we have uh, ample facilities and space for what we need. But when we came, it was, uh, it was a question why we're here, but it was on the bus line, which was right. very important because hmm. we had people that didn't have cars right. in, yeah. the, in the early 50s. And so uh, uh, that was uh, happening, uh, but that fire was something right. that changed our business. You never know what tragedy brings. Uh, usually uh, God's got a way of working it for the best sometimes, but it doesn't seem well, like it at the beginning, does it? It was, uh, right. it, it was uh, definitely a milestone. Right. So was the original uh, Swartz uh, roofing business on Plum Street? Was that the? It was. It was either on Plum Street or, uh, or Walnut Street. I'm not sure. Right. But uh, we were on Plum Street when I first. I used to visit here in the summer, and uh, I can remember, uh, you know, asking my grandpa. He paid off in those days out of a shoebox. Right. Said, grandpa, why don't I get a payroll? So ever since then. <laughs> I, even when I was in college, I got an envelope with a dollar. That's pretty cool. <laughs> do, you, wow. do you have the shoebox? Wow. I don't have the shoebox, and I, I'm ashamed of that. I should have kept the shoebox. <laughs> so is that building still on Plum Street, or is it, did it no, survive? it's gone. As a matter of fact, uh, it's right across from a venue that they had. Uh, uh, Emerson, Emerson Ballroom. Right? Emerson okay. Ballroom. Yeah. And I was telling Robert yeah. Rickard, who was major, major at the time, we used to park the kettles, which... That's how we heated the asphalt uh -huh. on the sidewalk. And I walked across to go, to go into the venue and I saw asphalt still there. I told him, <laughs> I said, that asphalt's been there all these years. You never paid us a dime for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So one of the things I like to ask multi-generational companies, how, how does the family, how do you make that work? What suggestions do you have for other families who aspire to aspire to that. Share a little bit of, about that. Well, you have to uh, celebrate each other and uh, and that's what we've done. We all have our, our own things that we're specialized in, or, but we cheer each other on. We're not jealous of one another. Uh, it's, it's great when any, when one succeeds, we all succeed. And we've been so fortunate. And the reason I think the company has been so successful is Family really goes beyond just the Kruger family. We have families within the company that have been multi-generational, uh, cousins, nephews, and have worked here. And we've had that feel because uh, we share more time here than we do at home so often. Hmm. And we, uh, we appreciate all that work here and what they do and everybody who's here makes a difference. And, and as long as uh, you can appreciate that, certainly there are times that you don't agree on everything, but at the end of the day, uh, we're, we're here, we're better off for it. The community's been wonderful to us. We've tried to give back to the community, and, and I, but people and families are the reason we've been successful. How many employees do y'all have now? 
Flip. About 58 employees okay. full time. So mm. uh, that's a lot of people to be responsible for it. That, it and, is. And it requires a lot of people to do what y'all do. So that's a good testament. Anything else y'all would like to share about making it work? I would say, as you said, we, we share the same goals. We all want the same thing. We do, we are from different generations, so we do think of things differently, but we all share the same values. So in the end, we want, we want the same outcome. We want to be successful for the company, for our employees, for our families, and, and we cheer each other on. As Dad said, it's, it, it's been a good, well, good that, way to operate. That doesn't have happen by accident. Well, uh, uh, you know, we, and it really starts with Melvin and works its way down that, that atmosphere, the culture that you create. Uh, is a, it's really amazing to see that. Well, of course, we're most proud of that. And part of what makes us even more proud is that everybody here is, is part of a, a, a team and they feel it very strongly. And we, we, look, we call them extended family because we really do feel that way. But uh, I'm a big believer that relationships define your life. And ours has been, as Steve said, uh, pride in each other. And uh, we disagree on things, but we always end up uh, being together no matter what. So it, uh, yeah. it's, it, uh, it's just been a... But moving that into to, to everybody that works for us and having them all understand that everybody here is very important to us. If, and uh, that, that's, that's driven the whole. Well, you probably don't have much turnover in a, in a business like that, but are there opportunities to join the team at times? Of course. Oh, okay. We're always looking for good, talented people uh, that can fit in with this culture. And, and when people have started working here, uh, the feedback I've gotten is that they just feel a part of something bigger. Uh, they love that it's, we, we've been around 114 years, we've been sustained through all these generations, and we have been able to hire people that helped us adapt right. to future. We don't mm. get stuck in the ways of the past, we, we adapt with new times, and we've hired some just wonderful, smart, talented people that have bought into the culture, right. and they have the long view. They're not they're not thinking short term. They're so thinking how does somebody term. find out if there's an opening at Ellie Swartz? Is it on the website or how do you know? You can call us. We have, uh, <laughs> we have. I think they'll watch Talk of the Town. And there you go. Right. Right. Hey, right away. Just give them so a call. Maybe somebody your next <laughs> super uh, star we, we might be people. watching today. One, one of the best employees we've had just called us on a whim and wow. he was moving to town and yeah. he's, he's been wonderful for us. So we never know how we're going to get that person. Yeah. Most of our people have come through referrals from the people that are right. here now. Yeah. And that's how we found that. That's a great way to find people too. Yeah, it is. And I'll just add the proof in the pudding to everything you guys are saying is the stellar reputation you guys have around town. I mean, it is just incredible to hear what everyone says about you guys. But moving back to what I talked about earlier, people like me, I've got to get a new roof. And so, Steve, I want to ask you this. When someone is looking at companies to put roofs on their house, what are the questions that they should be asking these companies when they're getting the roof in quotes? Well, you should always make sure they're insured. Make sure and do reference checks. Go, go through. Make sure they're using viable manufacturers that you can research. Uh, make sure that they'll stand behind their work, that their warranty will be worth more than the paper it's written on, that it, it really has some substantiation. So they'll need some financial backing there. Um, make sure they're not asking for everything up front, that they get the job done. You make sure you have a quality installation and before you pay for it. Uh, those are the things that primarily, for, certainly from a residential standpoint, that you should look for. And then give me a quick rundown on the different types of shingles you should be looking at. What are the different offerings? Mm -hmm. Give me just some like ballpark stuff here. Uh, there's three tab shingles, which there's good, better, best. There's three tab is good. There's architectural that's better. And then there's designer and all kind of uh, more exotic shingles, which and up to solar right. uh, that you now have that might be considered the the best if that's what you're looking for. And there's also metal shingles and other products oh, yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, we, our residential team it can 
run anybody through all their options right. and explain that. So are the so the new show, solar technology, does it qualify for some of the tax credits for solar roofing? It does. It does. It does. That they're, uh, they work through the manufacturer on these. There's a certain amount mm -hmm. uh, that the federal government offers with tax credits. Uh, they produce a certain amount of electricity, and I don't have those numbers, right. unfortunately, hopefully. But I, I will say that the company we're working with uh, has set, gets the information, runs the calculations, and tells the owner in year one, if we've told you you would save X dollars in uh, energy savings and it hadn't reached that, they'll write a check for the difference. Wow, wow. You know, working on people's legs, sometimes I remember patients that I've held that really stand out in my memory. Uh, you probably have the same memory about some roofing work you've done. So I'd like uh, Bevan and Steve to talk about some projects that really mean a lot to them that they that you've had the opportunity to well, work on. There, there are so many, but uh, you, you look at outstanding build, buildings uh, in making the Hay House, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Brown and Williamson Tobacco was a major, major project. Mercer, we've done a great deal of work there, as well as Wesley and, and uh, uh, all of those buildings have unique characteristics, so uh, to be uh, able to adapt to those has been a challenge. And uh, the, going back into the days uh, when school buildings became a major situation, we did work all over the, all over the state as well as the southeast. Uh, we did the Savannah City Hall. We did the Ebenezer Baptist Church in uh, in Atlanta, Martin Luther King's church, and uh, done a, a great deal of, of complex structures that uh, we're really proud of. So that, those are some of the things that I remember mostly. Well, and I would add that I'm super excited that we were part of the team to do the amphitheater here that was just completed. Oh, yeah. and wow. That was yeah, just a, because we're excited about what that means for Macon and yeah. having a chance yeah. to, to work with that team to see it through to fruition. It uh, really is great to ride by any time and, uh, and smile knowing that we, we did that roof and a lot of the wall panels and uh, that construction. Great way to end this. Melvin, Steve, Michael, thanks so much for joining us today and for letting us celebrate a company that's been in Macon for 114 years. We that's really, fantastic. Thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. We enjoyed it very much. And thank you guys for watching as well. Stay tuned because you never know where me and Dr. Harper might show up next.